progress. Justin, here we go. Super excited to have you on the program today. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Pleasure to be here, Victoria. Super excited again about our conversation. I have spent some time on your website getting to you know know a little bit more about you and what you uh, focus on, but would love for you to tell listeners a little bit more about yourself and about executive leadership coaching. Totally. So my name is Justin Mulvaney. I call myself a conscious leadership and executive coach, and I mostly work with founders and senior leadership and technology. Uh, and my focus is I'll either work one-on-one -on -one with those leaders, or I also facilitate with leadership teams. And my big focus, the way I brand it is I help leaders and leadership teams be more conscious, connected, and effective. I love that. So what specifically do you do as an executive leadership coach? Yeah. So you can think of coaches, there's so much in the coaching space, but there's kind of two veins. You can think of coaches who I would call them content coaches, or these are more subject matter experts. So when they work with leaders, leaders bring them challenges. And these coaches know a lot of best practices. They know a lot of frameworks. A lot of them are oper former operators. So they used yeah. to be founders or were very successful leaders themselves. And they're saying, here are some of the tactical ways that you can tackle these problems. The brand of coaching that I do, I do some of that, but I do more of what's called context coaching. And so my focus is more of, well, what are the patterns of behavior, the relational patterns, the leadership patterns that are underlying these issues? And how can we actually identify some of those and shift them? Mm, so you're a holistic, you take that holistic view into account when you're making recommendations. Exactly. We may work on content and use frameworks, but a quick example would be maybe a founder's coming and they say, hey, I'm struggling to create structure in my one-on-ones and my management meetings. And I could provide them with a bunch of ideas for how to structure those things. But a more useful inquiry is, hmm, I notice over here, I have a story that this founder struggles with being really like creating strict boundaries with people and really asserting what they want. And I'm much more curious about that. Hey, is there a history here for you of in relationship with people having a hard time asserting, hey, this is what I want out of our time together. And if that's the case, we can tackling that actually will tackle and solve a bunch of downstream issues. Whereas me giving you some frameworks, we're not actually looking at the underlying pattern and that pattern will keep repeating itself if we don't address that. Wow. That's incredible. So, I mean, that piece is super helpful for me to understand what you're doing now. Talk to us. Let's take it a step back. Talk to us a little bit about what your you know past has been in yeah. terms of work history and how did you you know identify that you wanted to become an executive leadership coach? Yeah, it's funny. I knew it when I was 22 or 23 after my first job. Uh, I've worked at early stage companies my whole career, hmm. and from the very beginning, I, I realized I noticed different things than the people that I worked with. So. When I first started working, I worked at a company. There were four of us. I was employee number three. We worked in a whole uh, co-working space with a whole bunch of other startups in a similar place as us. And whenever people looked at problems, it was always like tactics. Do we need to hire a new pe person? How can we do better design? And, and uh, on a very tactical business focused level. And for me, I was always very focused on well, what's what are the patterns that's happening with the people here, right? What's how is leadership leading? What is the more collective? It's almost a more sociological lens yeah. on what's going on. Yeah. And that was just way more interesting to me. So much so that even back then, I, I recently wrote a piece on this. I coined this term called founder DNA, which for me, I've seen this pattern everywhere. It's the pattern that a leader's dominant behavioral traits and relational patterns tend to cascade across their organization, pros oh. and cons. Interesting. So if you have, let's say, a super empathetic leader who's also conflict avoidant, their whole organization tends to be really empathetic and feel really good. And there's a few reasons why that might be happening. They tend to hire for people like them or people tend to model leadership's behavior. But it's likely that that whole org is going to be really conflict avoidant and have a hard time tackling really hard challenges or getting into things that where confrontation is beneficial. Mm -hmm. And so that just became kind of a lens where I saw every job that I was at and call it confirmation bias, but I just saw it everywhere. And I knew I was like, that for me is more interesting to me. And if I can help people solve that problem. It's way more valuable than any of this. I did analytics and product stuff. It's way more valuable than any of the analytics and product stuff that I do. 
Yeah. It's almost analytics on another, yeah. Interrelational level. Exactly. Exactly. It's kind of the same, that same intuitive analytical process, but applied to people and relationships. That's incredible. So can you share maybe a success story that you've had with someone that you've coached um, and, you know, what kind of tools you've implemented in different organizations? Yeah. Oh, such a good question. Um, I'm going to start with the tool before the success story. Perfect. The tool that I kick off with all of my leaders with, it's this exercise that's called polarity mapping. But it's actually, it's a very specific tool designed to help people identify their dominant leadership patterns and then identify kind of what I'd call the shadow or the leadership pattern that you don't have access to as a result of that. Uh huh. And so I, I'm actually going to walk through, the, it's four questions. I walk yeah, through it walk really through quickly. It. That would so be really cool. Imagine you have four quadrants, yeah. right? A top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right. And we'll start in the bottom left. And the exercise very simply starts within that bottom left list five to seven things, finishing the sentence. Sometimes I think I am too. And list what you think you might be too much of as a leader. And I pulled up my answer. So I had these, my answers for me are things like analytical. I can be too nice, too independent and too concerned with risk. I'm focused on hedging risk, not enough on opportunity. And then you bounce to the upper right quadrant and you go at those times, I would like to be more. And you list oh. out, what do you want to be more of, right? So it's like a reflection of that shadow that you kind of talked about earlier. Exactly. Yeah. And so for me, those answers, and you want to do a one-to-one -one mapping. So when I notice I'm too analytical, I'd like to be more intuitive. When I notice I'm too nice, I would like to be more direct, too independent, collaborative, and too concerned with risk. I'd like to be more objective. I like that. Then I bounce to the bottom left and I write down, what do I fear if I'm too much of the things? or the bottom right, what do I fear if I'm too much of the things that I just listed? And you kind of had to listen to like your fear-based brain, but what am I afraid is going to happen if I'm too intuitive, if I'm too direct, if I'm too collaborative, if I'm too objective? So that really helps you address the core issue. Exactly. What are my underlying fears? And for me, those are things like, I'm afraid if I'm too intuitive, things are going to go poorly because I just didn't think about it enough. Mm. Or if you I'm didn't too analyze it enough. You're too data driven. Yeah. Exactly. If I'm too direct, I'm people are going to think I'm a jerk and not going to want to work with me. If I'm too collaborative, I'll lose control. And if I'm too objective, something bad but preventable will happen. I wasn't concerned enough with the risk. And then you'll jump to the top left. And this is a little different. You're going to look at the bottom left. The first things you said, I think I'm too much of those things. Right below it. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to say, what are my values? What are the things that I value as a leader that lead me to be too much of those things? And to continue with it, for me, sometimes I think I'm too analytical. The thing that I value is truth, right? So there's an authentic value. I want to get to the truth, but sometimes I do too much of it. And then you can do that for each. I'm too nice. I value kindness. I'm too independent. I value self-sufficiency. I can be too concerned with risk. I value not failing. Yeah. This is so interesting because it really allows you to map out the thought process of yeah, behave, altering behaviors to change, you know, an organization and it yes. gets to those underlying root causes, which is really interesting. Yes. And then the, the final thing that I do with folks is we're going to label the left and the right side because okay. now on the left side, we have your dominant pattern, the yeah. values that you, you have and how you do too much of them. And on the right side, we have your non-dominant pattern and the pattern you kind of lose access to which is the things I'd like to compensate with and what I fear. And what we want to do is we want to expand your leadership range. I don't want to just have you be unconsciously on the left side. I want to make it so you're, con you're consciously choosing the left and also you have access to the right. Ah. So the way we do this is we just kind of give them quick labels. So for me, that left side to analytical, nice, independent, uh, concerned with risk, I label that side of me. It's, my, it's like measured, Justin, or it's my thoughtful, Justin. It's very cerebral. Yeah. And the right side of me is more trusting, unfiltered, Justin. It's I'm actually not thinking, I'm just letting things flow. Because and sometimes when you unblock that piece, that'll help you achieve that top upper left value quadrant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so what I want to do with my leaders, we're going to focus on becoming really conscious of when you're in your dominant pattern, mm -hmm. not even shifting it, just noticing it. And then we're going to identify arenas where you can play with being the non-dominant pattern. And so for me, let's say I was coaching myself, I would say, hey, Justin, are there any recurring meetings or tasks where you can just 
practice going predominantly into trusting unfiltered Justin and just see what happens and let your team know you're running this experiment. But then you wow. start to feel out some of the pros and the cons of being in that other side of leadership. Cool. So yeah, you, you encourage, I guess, leaders to say, Hey, I'm trying something new today and to yes. maybe measure that with the team. So that way you can collect some feedback. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, you can do feedback, but it's also about just creating a safe space. Like okay. I'm experimenting with showing up radically differently. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so just know that I'm playing around. It might be a little messy, but I'm trying to expand my leadership range because for me, let's use a very specific example. If I'm making it so I can't be direct, that's going to cause some problems. Right. And so I'm not trying to make it so I'm direct all the time, but I'm trying to expand my range as a leader. Okay. So I can be direct when I really need to be. Cool. So yeah, it just opens the door for allowing new approaches to problem solving. Exactly. Exactly. It's, like it's expanding the range of things that I can show up in as a leader. Mm. Oh, that's so cool. I actually owe that to, there's a woman, Bina Sharma. There's a whole school of thought and coaching that's polarity thought. And nice. so I actually got this from them, but there's a ton of work you can do around polarities and internal polarities inside of you to level up as a leader. Wow. That's incredible. So tell me about a success story that you've experienced using either this method or uh, other methods with your clients. Yeah. Yeah. I have a whole, I'm thinking of the testimonials on my website because I have a whole <laughs> slew of them. Yeah. Um, and almost always you'll, you'll find some very similar things, but I have two leaders who specifically come up, you know, some leaders there's transition moments. So oh, I, I worked okay. with a woman who actually totally not found her. She was the head of a dental practice and she was, found it very easy to be a strong leader when she was kind of a lieutenant underneath someone else, but was struggling when she had her own practice. Oh. And just a, a lot of what we focused on was her getting feedback much sooner and much more directly. And using this, we noticed, hey, the reason why not was because she really wanted to create a positive environment. And so what we had to identify was, hey, how does actually being really direct and really straightforward with feedback also contribute to a positive environment? How can we have both of these mm. things, right? And for her, I mean, she really took onto it really beautifully, realized, hey, one, if I don't give my people this feedback, there's kind of this pent up tension, right? They can sense it. It's not just there. And also my people are here to grow. And so if I actually make it so my feedback is being given, and for her, what we identified is that fear and the limiting belief was feedback is always negative. It's always critical. I was and like, she needed to see that as a value add for her team that she is yeah. helping them in the long run. Yeah. It's like BS. That doesn't have to be true, right? I can give you feedback from a place of, I love you. I value you. I want us all to be excellent. I think you can be more excellent and I'm seeing something. Wow. And so it was really kind of breaking through some foundational limiting beliefs underneath that, that enabled her to kind of get that flow of feedback going more easily. Wow. That's an amazing story. So thank you for walking me through that and, you know, getting to understand your method and process, you know, in a real life example. Um, how can listeners connect with you? Are you taking on clients right now? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So the best way to find me, justinmulvaney.com. That's my website. There's three ways to play. So if you're like, I would love to explore working with Justin one-on-one -on -one, right on the homepage, there's a contact form. From there, I schedule calls with folks and we do some discovery. And I, I like to really get to know people in trial sessions and not paying at first. Okay. So we can really decide, hey, is this an awesome fit? Am I the coach for you? Or are you the client for me? I love that. If you're interested in facilitation work, I have a separate page on my website for facilitation that talks about the work that I do with teams and in workshops. Yeah. And then if you're just like, hey, I want to keep track of Justin, the best place is probably I have a newsletter that's linked to right from my website, a mm -hmm. Substack that I usually write once a week, once every other week, depending on how things are busy, sharing a lot of tools like this. I, I love to open source the things that I do with my clients. And so I try and make sure that newsletter is super action packed with like, Hey, this is literally things that I'm excited about that I'm working with my people on. So you can play with them yourself. Wow. Well, that's amazing that again, you're providing those resources for, you know, anyone just available to anyone. Um, but again, I know you have that special touch in terms of understanding and identifying um, you know, certain behaviors and, you know, leading your clients to success. So super excited to have had the chance to speak with you today. This was an awesome conversation. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is a blast. Thank you so much, Victoria.